If you're ready, I'm ready. We're talking about my story first. So grew up in Amarillo, Texas, small hold town. On, let me, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to open the show, bro. You're opening the show. Let's do this. I <laughs> thought you were already on the show. Nope. But this is going to make for a great intro. So here we go. Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Welcome to episode 276 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, your host. Today on the show, we have T-Nut, or Travis McNutt, of Texas Showshine Detailing in Dallas, Texas. Travis, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jimbo. I appreciate it. <laughs> we jumped again a little bit, but you're good. I uh, could always edit that, and I will. But that'll actually make for a really funny intro. So Travis is has a really interesting story um, and is using some really unconventional ways to actually get more work in a really short amount of time. So I'm excited, Travis, uh, that we uh, held that before uh, – held that to – us recording, but um, for people that don't know you, can you give us a little bit of background on you yourself, where where you're from, where you're at, what you're doing? Yes, sir. I grew up in Amarillo, Texas, small West Texas town. It's actually rated the windiest city in America. If you look it up, wind's always blowing. Um, was there till I was 22 as far as detailing, kind of always did that on the side, even when I was 14, 15 years old for friends and family, neighbors, stuff like that. Obviously never made a profit, but it's always been in my back pocket, something that I could do, uh, I guess, with an entrepreneurial mindset to chase a little extra income. But left Amarillo at 22, moved out to California for six months and actually through our conversation learned, went to the same school as your wife, Marietta Bible College. Yep. Yep. What year so, were you know. there, by the way? Uh, I think it was like 2003 okay. or no, nah, had to have been later than that. Maybe 2006. I'd have to go back and do the math. Okay. But. Anyway, went there, found out that the same school had a campus in Maui, so moved out to Maui, lived on the island for a year, uh, loved that. Moved to Scottsdale, Arizona after that to go ahead and finish out my business degree and started working for a company called Natural Partners. They're a holistic distribution and wholesale operation for natural medicine, uh, usually direct to consumer and also uh, to naturopathic doctors, MDs, all that kind of stuff. So I've always had a supply chain or supply chain logistics background, so that fit for me. Got a job there while I was finishing uh, my degree. Ended up staying with them for a while and worked up to the assistant manager of the distribution center. But I worked in receiving every position in the warehouse. I worked as a buyer, which is a pretty relevant position from a business standpoint, just understanding the ins and the outs of how business actually works. I say that's relevant because it helped kind of form my mentality for my own personal business today. But it's a great place to work. Lots of culture, very similar to a Zappo Shoes or Google. They're doing tons of activities uh, to stimulate good, healthy relationships within the company. And that kind of trickled over into everything we did. It kind of shaped the mentality for that company. But even having a business degree, that's where I learned business. And like I said, with my background in supply chain and logistics, everything's process oriented, very efficient, driven, lean driven. You're always trying to maximize output for less money. And so all those concepts carry over into the detailing business for me. But, uh, Took a job as a regional operations manager for a company here in Dallas, and that's what brought me out here. That was two years ago. Uh, managed a really big process for them, which my takeaway and my benefit was, was extremely educational, experience-wise, relationship-wise. But I didn't work out and ended up leaving there about six months after I started. So we're looking at like August, September of 2015. Didn't really know what I was going to do, walked out of there and uh, was really burned by the corporate 
atmosphere. It just rubbed me the wrong way to cut the way that we made our final separation. And I wanted to work for myself. I didn't really know what that looked like in the back of my mind. I was always like, I'm going to get a power washer, run a detailing company. Mm. But even though that was a thought, I didn't really get there for probably another four or five months. So started doing some, what, what they call arbitrage, buy low, sell high. So I was looking into the market, supply chain logistics, trying to buy things at a low price and then resell in secondary markets and uh, started doing sales for this oil investment company, which led me to my mentality or pursuit of knowledge in the sales environment, just learning what is a sale, what are the processes, how do you talk to people. But it had me on the phones, making phone calls, learning how to sell while I was doing that, I was working on my laptop because I was only on the phone, so I really could do two things at once, and I was kind of keeping an arbitrage thing alive while I was making phone calls. And and then it came a little bit later. That didn't work out. It's hard to sell $40,000 uh, oil investments in a bad market, but it taught me a tremendous amount about sales. And so I kind of highlighted on those things to – reiterate the things that are really working for me today in my detail business but <clears throat> started working with a guy uh, his name was Tony he had actually detailed my car whenever I was working as a regional operations manager he came by the the warehouse he was a mobile setup guy detailed my car and I had randomly become friends with him just because he played golf and so we shared that we would play golf and I just said hey man let me come detail cars uh, with you for a day and just hang out. And really, I wanted to pitch him uh, an opportunity on my arbitrage business that I thought I had going. I guess all that being said, I ended up working with him for about nine months full time and uh, just doing whenever I started with him, he was doing $75 washes. 100% of his business was repeating referrals. To this day, he's still getting all of his business from the at next door, which I know yep. you brought up on a, on a previous episode, but he gets all of his business from that. Does he advertise uh, on that or just word of mouth? You can't advertise, okay. but you, you can put in keyword searches, detailing, and it'll t bring you a feed of everything detail related for the last, whatever amount of time. So you can go back in there and you can start hitting those people up. Uh, did you get a detail? Were you satisfied? This, that, and the other, or, or you can refer your own company, you know, or most of the time, once you build within a neighborhood, right. the way I understand it, you're kind of in your neighborhood. So once you've built a name for yourself in a neighborhood, then it will evolve organically. And he stays busy, man. Whenever I was uh, with him, we were doing 20 to 25 cars a week at a hundred bucks a pop. And I mean, so 20, 25, 2000, 2500 a week, he was paying me 30% of everything to a hundred dollar detail. So we would do $400 details a day. I was making 120 bucks, not bad money. Uh, especially considering the low stress work environment. I was doing something I enjoyed. I was working with a guy that was pleasurable to be around. And so everything was conducive for me to sit there and just learn. Um, and uh, I think I was saying, he said uh, he paid me 50% of everything over 100. So okay. if we could get a higher job, then I'd make a little bit more money. This, that, and the other. What did the, when you say a $75 wash or a $75 detail, what did that look like? I mean, that was a full detail um, by definition. We would, do full vacuum, pull the mats, move the seats around, clean any stains, clean all the vinyl, rubber, wow. plastic surfaces. Um, a significant you know, cleanup for in, 75 bucks. Dial it in. Yeah, absolutely. And and usually a, a full bucket wash with power washer, hand dry, and then they would do like a spray wax. But that was 75 bucks right, right there. That's what he was doing before I started with him. Then we went to 100 and I think – he's actually up to 120. He does like more of a flat rate, which uh, I don't necessarily, I don't absolutely don't agree with, but right. um, it does well for him and he's successful. And it, I guess my idea 
after working with him, uh, spinning off your podcast today, I thought I needed a truck, trailer, mm. water tank, generator, power washer, and all this stuff before I could start my own detail company. Originally, he had said, let's grow this thing. You'll, I'll buy you a truck and a trailer. We'll have two crews, 90 days. And like I said, nine months later, I was still riding around with him, which was fine. But it was just not what I wanted to do. I have a much bigger mentality or a bigger picture of everything that can happen. Mm -hmm. And so I was not, I was not happy there. So he's happy there. I wanted to do more. Um, and so eventually I had to make my separation. And so I started actually the way it went down. He had knee surgery and, uh, I had bought all my own equipment. He knew this, he knew I was moving in this direction. And I said, well, I'm going to go to Amarillo, my hometown, and I've got some details to do out there. And I know you're going to be down for several weeks with your knee surgery. Uh, so I'll just touch base with you soon. And basically from there, for me, uh, he had taken on his son as an employee. And so it really worked out for him to where there was not a, it wasn't a bad separation. And I went on and pursued and, and created Texas Showshine, which is my business today. And uh, I guess that was around, I'm thinking back, August of last year. So August of 2016 is whenever I started doing it all on my own. So I didn't necessarily have a customer base at that point, And I have integrity, so I didn't pursue any of the customers that I had met mm. through Tony. I think... I think that's good business sense that wouldn't have yeah. said well for me or who I am. So his business is his business and I was going to create my own. Um, you want to throw anything else in before I just so, keep rambling on? No, no, no. It's good. It's good. And I, what I like about laying out and kind of why I always ask people to talk about their kind of entry into detailing is because it helps people that are listening relate. You know, instead of being like, oh, I got a successful business now and everything's good and I got a steady client base, it's like awesome, but like, what did that look like to get there? You know, so uh, one thing that if people listen to the, the episode that I released on the day that we're recording, which is Friday, March 17th, um, I talked about like the best mobile detailing setup, but you said when you were rolling around with Tony. So I know the answer to this question, but if people haven't listened to that episode, I kind of want to uh, clarify. You said when you were rolling around with Tony, one of the things that um, you thought was that you needed to have a truck and a trailer and this whole setup. Um, and then, then you mentioned that you were getting, you bought your own equipment. So did you end up buying a truck and a trailer to start or what did your first mobile rig look like? Or what does your, do you still have that? set up and what yeah, does that look like so absolutely um what i did my granddad is getting of age and he's not driving anymore and he had this 93 ford pickup that he had bought and i actually learned to drive in it that's just a little two cents extra but Sweet. he wanted to get rid of it so i bought his truck from him for 1600 bucks it had 118,000 miles on a 93 in pristine condition but wow. got that bought a water tank off of offer up mm -hmm. or five mile, which I'll mention later, but for guys out there who are looking to source equipment of any kind offer up five mile. Those are great resources to buy things at a discount. Anyway, got my tank. Cause you kind of had that uh, arbitrage it, mindset, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had already been buying and selling mm -hmm. tons of stuff in these markets already. So I was really familiar with how to source, uh, materials and products and stuff like that at a discount. I never yeah. want to pay full price, but right. I will to do things like buy your affiliate link products. So you get a kickback yeah. at shopwithjimbo.com. At shopwithjimbo.com. <laughs> Appreciate that. And, uh, <laughs> so got the truck, got the tank. I decided to get my power washer and my generator from Home Depot. So that if I did have mechanical issues that I had a direct source where I wasn't going to be, out equipment for a long amount of time. I felt like that was a valuable resource to just be able to trade my equipment in since it was going to be my bread and butter, how I made my, how I made my money. Anyway, truck, got all the equipment, water tank. 
I think I used my water tank three times before it sat in my garage for nine months and I just sold it because I just got sick of looking at it. But so how um, do you, and I would run around. Here's the question I, I get. Truck. How do you, how do you, if you only use your pressure washer three times, how do you clean cars? Well, I, I guess prefacing your answer, I now work out of my <laughs> infinity G 37 and so it's a much smaller workspace, but I'll just get it. I don't like doing fully mobile out in the middle of a parking lot, like office space type details, but I do have some of those accounts. So I'll just take uh, three or four or five gallon buckets full of water and I'll put the sealed lid on them and I just take them with me. And then I have an empty bucket. And every time I start a car, then I'll pour some fresh water in there, throw some o and mm. do a rinseless wash, and then I clean the wheels with the same water that I did the paint at the end. I'm typically not doing a two-bucket method on my right. uh, ser- service washes at the office place. but um, And then I'll just dump the water, and so that's my water. I can take 20 gallons of water with me, and I can... Never had a problem getting through the cars I had to get through. So. Awesome. Sorry to interrupt. Keep keep. No, going. you're good. I think I think that answered. I got I I thought I had this hurdle. I thought I had this thing that was keeping me from being able to be in a position to have my own company, and that was capital to invest into that equipment. And so I guess I would say that to say now I'm running out of my car. I literally my business has shifted more towards paint correction. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to, in a sense, take less towels, take less water. You know, I don't have to really worry about using, taking that stuff with me. And 99% of the time I've got a water source and I've got a power source. And I have never dealt with a client who had a single problem lending their power or water to you. I I know some guys say, I don't want to, do that it's unprofessional whatever i have never had anybody have a problem with that in fact most clients are willing to like go buy you lunch and do whatever they can to help you out because you're already delivering a great service to them and so they've already found value in you as as a service provider so they don't mind taking care of those little things because they know they're going to be taken care of in the end so totally um do 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 any of your customers because i'm curious with a car because this was kind of a mind uh, you know, kind of a mind trick that my own brain was playing on me when I was transitioning from like a truck and a trailer to a van to a different van to a truck to blah, blah. and now like I was we were talking the other day, I'm thinking about like how little of a car can I get, you know, and still get away with it. Do, do customers ever? And here's a thing that kind of has plagued me, not plagued me, but I thought about is like, do any of your customers like? working out of such a small car, do any of them like, is the perceived, uh, perception that when you pull up, like you're kind of, maybe you're not as professional cause you don't have like this big truck or van or do your customers not even care or do they not even say I'd anything? Say that's like or do a, they like it? I would say it's a threefold answer. Um, one, if they found me through social media, which most of my customers do, they've already seen the work. And so it doesn't matter what I show up in Mm -hmm. because they already know that I'm working on all these various types of rides that, I mean, it's just not something they're worried about. You know, I've already established myself as the professional and the expert before I, before they're ever faced with the need to decide if I'm that person, if that makes sense. Got it. I think that answers, The other part, when I'm talking to somebody, I build enough value in who I am and what I do and the processes and what they're going to experience by hiring me before I get there to where it wouldn't matter. And then the third thing would be my car is nice. I've polished it. um, I've coated it. I've coated the wheels, coated the glass, you know. And so I can almost use it as a showcase if somebody maybe is or is not on the fence about a correction or a coding, then I've got a rolling sales force right here. I can just bust it out and say, well, look, here's, look how hydrophobic it is. Pour water on the paint or 
spray the wheels off, you know what I mean, and all the dust falls off. So, I mean, it's like, for me, it's a marketing tool at this point. Totally. That's, that's funny you said that. That's exactly, that's actually been one of the biggest selling points for coatings for me personally, and I don't know about you, but the fact that my own car is coated and I keep it relatively clean, um, especially if I'm going to go quote a coating, um, and, yeah, then, and then, for sure. then just use my car as a selling example and say, go look at my car. Do you want this car's you know, five years old, or in my case, it's only a year and a half old. So, uh, but it's like, go look at my car. And if you want that, that's what I can deliver. And that, and absolutely most people that look at the truck that are even slightly considering the coding, when they look at the truck, it's like, yeah, I want that, you know? And I'll say this about my truck because it was an older truck. I did do a half-ass polish on it and but i didn't it's white you know what i mean it's my right. work truck it wasn't my daily driver so i didn't really keep it all that clean and i will say that i did have a lot of comments on i thought you would have something nicer or um you know somebody comes and sticks their head in my window it's like my truck wasn't clean, definitely not as clean as I keep my car, but it's like, I live out of this thing. You know, I'm in here right. sometimes 14 hours a day, five, six days a week. And I'm, I'm traveling back and forth from Amarillo to here, which we didn't hit on yet, but you know, I'm living out of this thing. And so it never, I guess the short and simple answer, it never kept me from getting a job. I always built that value in myself before I was ever on site. So it never mattered. But for guys that are worried about it, um, I'll talk a little bit more about building value in yourself in your communication processes and your social media processes uh, to where that's not going to be an issue. It doesn't matter what you show up in because they're paying for a result, not for you to have a nice vehicle. Then so l- let's get over kind of, that. Yeah. Good. Good insight there. Let's transition then into how you got clients because you said, uh, you know, you did the the right thing and not trying to steal a bunch of clients from uh, your previous employer. So how did you, um, you know, how did you get your first clients? How are you getting clients? What are what are some strategies that are working for you in that area? Okay, um, I'll say social media is where I get. 100% of my clients other than offer up in five mile, which I'll say for guys starting out, offer up five mile Craigslist, you know, you got to get out there and you got to post and you got to write some content and you got to make some videos and you got to take some pictures and you can keep those ads current or you can post them as frequently as you need to. But when everybody, somebody goes and searches auto detailing or whatever, on Craigslist, five mile offer up. And you can even go Google search what are free ways to market my business. And I guarantee you, you'll come up with a a list of 20 others, but there's tons of ways to market your business, get your name out there. So you have to take tons of action. I think three things I wanted to talk about were action, building value, and then your networking. So everything you have, you do, you have to take action. So post in those outlets, um, Social media, I'm constantly active in social media. So I'm posting on Instagram at least twice a day. Uh, If you're interested in how to market in social media, Google it. If you haven't done some research, it's worth just Googling it and getting some common knowledge and then apply that. But anyway, social media, be posting all the time. They say you have to post seven times a day if you want to hit everybody on your friends list because not everybody has uh, or not everybody sees what you post if you're not posting multiple times a day. So I'm very active in social media. Uh, Whenever people come up on my friends list and it says friends you may know, I'll be straight up honest and say if it looks like... (laughs) Just a quick glimpse, if it looks like somebody that might have a nice car, if they have a car on their profile video, if it looks like a a guy in a a nice business get up or whatever it may be, I add friends. So I'm constantly adding people, Mm -hmm. probably uh, 100 people a month. And I'm doing that 
in two different ways, one professionally and one retail. So I'm pursuing to grow my, um, my reach. I'm mm-hmm. looking to grow my reach with potential customers. And then I'm also adding a lot of detailers and a lot of other professionals in our industry. And a lot of the guys you see on all the mainstream YouTube videos and stuff, all those guys will accept your request. And to my experience, will most likely reply if you send them a message or whatever. So growing your professional network is going to help you a ton. You're going to see posts from other people. So you're going to learn about new products. You're going to see videos. So you're going to learn how to, how not to do certain things. Um, You're going to see some of the guys who are doing it the way that you want to do it. And if you start following what they're doing, then from a business mentality and a detailing mentality, you should be able to evaluate what those people are doing, how they're marketing themselves. And then you, and you can take that and apply it to your own pursuit of marketing. And so I'm building my professional network. I'm talking to detailers, a uh, shout out for, Billy that you did a podcast with an American yeah. detailer. That is a great group of guys. Did I've you know about that group there. before? Did you know? About no. The, okay. Before the podcast? No. Okay. And so, and then that led just my mentality that led me to think, well, I didn't even know about these groups. This is a great group. I love it. Mm. What other groups are out there? So I don't know. I haven't pursued it. I've talked with one of my other mentors and he's in one called, uh, one called detailing for dummies which i haven't looked up and then some other one uh about coatings realms of coding which Mm -hmm. i think is a private group so i haven't tried to break in there but um so they have these facebook groups so you're gonna absolve or take in a tremendous amount of knowledge and those are resources for you uh building a business all these guys that i've come across are very very helpful and willing to to give you some of their time and you have to look at it as their time is very valuable. So don't ask them like stupid questions that you can get a simple Google search return for. But <laughs> if you have some kind of complicated deal, you know, you're working on a car and you've worked through three different pad types on two different machines and you've used four different polishes and you can't get it. Have some guys that you can hit up on the fly and say, Hey, look, this is where I'm at. What would you do? And so having those resources in your back pocket, across every area of your business, whether it be sourcing your materials, whether it be finding clients, you know, you always have those clients that are the outlying clients that you can kind of call on if you need to do a job or or this, that, and the other. But building those networks uh, is going to be tremendous for your personal success and success and growth in your, in your detail company. And then uh, clubs, for my area. So I'll go and I'll find the charger and Hellcat car clubs and car groups, the Corvette car clubs and car groups, the Mustangs, the exotics. And I start adding myself into those groups, the car clubs and the car meet. So every, I mean, you can search your local market for car clubs and car meet, start going to some of those things, start handing out cards, you know, take a power inverter, tell a dude to bring his car over there and you Mm. polish a square in the middle of his hood that looks perfect and let him leave. I mean, things like that. So you're plugging into these networks of people and all you really have to do is one job for somebody in that network before it's one job turns into two, two turns into three. And, and if nothing else, now that I've done a couple cars for some of those guys in the groups, I don't even have to go back and, and catch uh, the request for somebody performing what I do. Those guys are already my advocates, you know, because they follow that group. They're passionate about their cars and they do these events. And so whenever they see somebody searching out something that they've had a phenomenal experience with, they're your, dude, they're your sales force. They're the ones pitching the job. So that's been really helpful. Are you doing all this from, I guess I should have asked this at the very beginning, but from your personal Facebook page or are you doing it from your business page? Um, so I have a strategy. If I'm posting photos, then I always post to Instagram. My Instagram shares to my business page and then Got I it. share the link from my business page to my personal page. Got but it. I'm 
I usually am building my network on my personal page, but I link everything I do back to my business resources whenever I'm on Facebook. Gotcha. And a quick, uh, a quick plug there would be whenever you're returning uh, communication text, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, inbound or outbound text, create or send a link to your Facebook, your Instagram, your email send maybe a couple pictures after they know what, or after you know what kind of car they have. Typically you've probably done one of those cars. So send them a couple pictures, invite them to join you on social media. And that's going to show if they, if you can get them to your platforms, then it's over. You're going to have a much higher <laughs> success rate. You know what I mean? Totally. And that's, so. you know what I like, I really like about, um, uh, Everything that you're talking about is it just takes work, but it's so practical, you know, and a, and a lot of guys that reach out to me are just starting out. They're looking at ways to get new clients, how to differentiate themselves from the other detailers in their area, how to get more visible. And these are all things that people can just do, you know, it just takes the work to do it, but it's way better than complaining about having no work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... Everything we're doing is difficult and it requires tremendous amounts of action. So in everything you do, you should be thinking, how can I do this better? How can I be more successful at that? And if you're, if you have that mentality, then not finding answers to those questions is not practical. You know, you're going to find the answers. Um, I would say find, uh, for the pursuit of knowledge, I asked you the other day if you listened to EO Fire, and I asked you because I had a podcast that I wanted you to listen to, but then for the life of me, I can't find it. So <laughs> that was that random text. But uh, get on some of these podcasts like Jimbo, Jay Balaam, and listen <laughs> to the content that he has. EO Fire, Grant Cardone, Young Hustlers, mm-hmm. uh, Power Players. Power Players is great with Grant Cardone. He interviews multi-million and multi-billion dollar uh, or uh, self-made entrepreneurs, and he just asks them in 30 minutes how they got there, where they came from, how they got there, just like you do in your show. Yep. But it's on a, a much larger scale. So if you want to be big, you want to do it big time, then you go find the people who are doing it big time, and then you copy how they do it. Yep. And so – go get that knowledge and then transfer it back to the, the detailing industry. And there's never been a time in history that it's actually so it's actually, I look at it like it's almost overwhelming the amount of opportunity and ways to get knowledge and, uh, and, and just figure out ways to, to achieve the things that you want to achieve than the time that we're living in right now. Yes. And I think another thing that's been crucial for me is if you do want to make it full time, you do want to go out and you have this dream of being a self, uh, self-employed business owner, then you have to position yourself in every other realm of your life for that to happen. So from my friendships to even my relationship, you know, my, my girlfriend is my man. She's my backbone. She helps me. She works with me. She can detail and polish cars, you know, mm. and I'm traveling all the time. I'm only with her usually two weeks a month because I'm going between Dallas and Amarillo and I'm gone a lot. Whenever I am around, I'm on my phone, on my social media, I'm talking to people. And so for her, that's a sacrifice, but, um, I don't, I live, uh, we live in a, in a house with one of my buddies and I know everybody doesn't have that option, but my point is position yourself for success. So I don't have a a contract to where I'm living so I can change what I'm doing any day of the week. I have a low rent. I don't have an expensive car payment. I don't have other substantial amounts of debt. You know, I don't buy the only new cool shit I buy for myself is detailing equipment and Everybody that knows me knows if they want to get me something, they can get me something detail related and I'm totally stoked on it. But I just, in every area of my life, from my time to my relationships to my financial obligations, I position myself to be in success mm. for a business owner because it's, I knew it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be 
tight. And I went through months and months of being hungry and bootstrapping and being behind on bills, but getting out there and making the hustle work and getting caught back up, you know, but you have to position yourself for success if you want to make that transition. 100%. Hundred percent, and and that's again, that's why I like the the topics that you brought about and the strategies that you just talked about. Because if you just put in the work, it's all doable, and and you can see. Yeah. In the the best thing about the detailing industry is that you can you can almost see instant. Maybe not. I guess everyone measures success differently, but you could see. So not instant success, but you can see instant results. Like you talked about, posting on Craigslist is going to get you calls almost instantly at least calls yeah now it's up to yeah. the person to be able to work on their se- selling skills and their selling ability to be able to land those calls right and to work their way yeah. up in the the price range but at least it'll get you almost instant calls you know so that's what's yeah. that at least and that'll keep you motivated hopefully to keep going and keep pursuing uh the pursuit of knowledge and all that that you talked about as well so you mentioned you're traveling Somebody- back and oh go ahead sorry I was going to say, and when you're talking to those people, you're inviting them to your social media exactly. and you're getting them connected with you. So even they're, you're going to be in their face for the rest of their life, you know, until they delete you as a friend. It's like everybody that you have on your friends list sees these posts. So it's going to be burned into their brain, auto detailing. I know the guy to go to because he's blowing my Facebook up with these daggum detailing posts. But right. <laughs> always get pe- in, people into your network. But sorry, where were you going next? I was just uh, going to say you talked about you you're traveling between two locations. What's the purpose behind that, and what do you have up your sleeve for that? So I, like I said in the beginning, left to Amarillo. That's my hometown. I have a huge network of people there. My fa- it's a town of two hundred thousand, and my family is in business, law enforcement, um, and it's the Bible Belt. So churches, my granddad is a pastor. So my network there is huge, which is crucial. I talked about building your network. So I have all this business there. So I've been traveling back and forth from Dallas to Amarillo because I guess still today and even initially, I wouldn't be probably making it without that business. And Mm. so I'm traveling back and forth. And at this point, I've had... I'm trying to decide if I want to move back to Amarillo and open a shop. Uh, We talked about the other day, moving back to Amarillo equals failure to me because everybody I've ever known that leaves there goes back. And so I attribute those two things together. But we talked about how what I'd like to do is open a shop there, train some detailers, train a manager and walk away from it as something that's residual scalable income for me. And be able to go to Scottsdale where I lived and I'd love to open a shop there. Uh, that's what I'm, that's where I want to live. I love the weather. And then like you, I also see this in a much bigger light in the fact that I can be a professional detailer and have an online business that's successful as well, mm-hmm. providing knowledge to other people and, and detailers. And so I, I see things in the same way that you do in that aspect, but So moved to Amarillo, stay here. Um, And another thing that we almost rolled on to at the beginning of the show, you said, so by building your network of detailers, are you making money from that? And the answer would be yes. I linked up with this dude, Ryan Harper, Harper's Auto Grooming. And uh, just followed him. You know, we were just buds on social media, um, we were in some of the same car groups, like the Corvette group, mm-hmm. and uh, we would both get recommended for these jobs, and it turned out he bought a motorcycle two weeks ago, and like a week later, somebody hit him on it. Uh. He crashed, fractured his collarbone in four places, and, uh, you know, he has no health insurance. He can't he can't hold a polisher, so now his successful business is... Uh, is in that light where none of us would ever want to be. And so I reached out to him, just said, Hey Ryan, I know you had an accident, man. I just want you to know that as a detailer or a buddy, if you need some help, I got you. And so Mm. ended up talking with him and now I'm doing uh, just coding jobs. So he's got a bunch of coding work 
And so I'm doing coding jobs. Yesterday I went and did a brand new uh, Grand Sport Corvette that he had booked. And so it's a way for uh, me to make an, a, a substantial amount of money. I charge him 100 bucks an hour for me to be on site. Whatever that looks like is whatever it looks like. But he's got a helper that he pays much less who is experienced and apprentice. And so yesterday I took his apprentice and we went and did that coating, did a light polish, coated everything. It was about four and a half hours. I make 400 bucks. He makes enough, you know, he's sitting at home crashed, but he still is able to generate income. So that was how that kind of played into making money through that network of people that I you have never built. know. Yep. Never know, man. And I think for guys that are new and starting out, there's plenty of guys out there that are willing to help you out with knowledge, uh, with training. Um, if you find them in your local network and you reach out to them and you make yourself sound serious, like a professional, like I said, don't call them and ask them shit. You can just get a simple Google search return for, but <laughs> you know, if you're passionate about doing it, then reach out to those guys. And you know what? Don't just reach out to them once. Reach out to them two, three times. Go by the shop and say, what's up? You know, mm -hmm. I just wanted to check out the shop. Show me, show me your process. You know, if you show that type of passion and that type of action, then somebody, it's not going to take long. It's going to take you in. And, and you're going to be able to use that person as a mentor, as a life coach, as a business coach, or even just a resource for knowledge to move forward with your own uh, business endeavors. So, hundred percent. Was there anything else that you wanted to kind of touch on or talk about or gripe on or rant on? How long? Uh, if I was going to gripe or rant on anything, <laughs> I was thinking about this. Literally, nothing with the network or the the industry. Like we all know the keyboard warriors, all those typical gripes. You know, everybody telling you. Oh, you're ruining this or that, or don't do it that way. You know, I think the most effective way is to have a way, a effective way that mm -hmm. could look a hundred different ways. You know what I mean? But as long as you have a process, you have a way, then it's going to give you the ability to walk into any situation and know how you're going to handle it start to finish. And you can explain that to your customers in the sales process. That was uh the other thing I hate is extension cords. I freaking hate <laughs> extension cords. Like I'm always doing corrections, moving, you know, light stands around and my polishers are plugged in. And so that's probably my least favorite part about everything I do is extension cords. <laughs> I, I think we'll eventually have the technology in machines and stuff that everything will either be, that everything will be like battery powered. You know, you know, it'd be crazy yeah. is a gas powered buffer. Well, how about kinetically powered like your watch? Because it's already generating its own kinetic energy. So it should be able to charge itself through fi vibration. That would be cool. I think, and I think that's where we're get, we'll, we'll, geez, we will get eventually, but that's, I, I would, this next year at SEMA, I'd like to see some, um, I'd like to see some cool innovations like that, you know, where the extension cord kind of goes away. Yeah, my, I'm, I'm on board for it. Uh, I guess the one other thing I wanted to talk about was just kind of sales process for handling sales calls. Um, you know, whenever somebody calls you, you should know beforehand everything that you're going to say. And it'll be easy for something they say to throw you off guard, but just to find a way back to being able to communicate who you are, what your services are and, and doing that effectively. And, you know, so you take a call and somebody's like, I just, I, I love this question. How much for a detail? Yep. And so, you know, I try right there. I tell them, well, I provide a wide range of services from uh, wash and detailing maintenance packages all the way to three to five year protection plans that are ceramic coating and are really an investment into your vehicle. So let me ask you a few questions and I'll be able to tell you what I think will work for you. So it's just a way to say, first off, set up the bigger picture because you're going to go there, you know? Right. And then it, it just, it's inviting. So they're like, okay, yeah, sure. So 
So you want to run through your basic questions. Mm -hmm. What kind of vehicle do you have? Uh, Maybe what color is it? I like to ask when was the last time you had it detailed so I get a picture of of what their detail regiment looks like. You know, you're already setting up to know what you're walking into. Um, If they have any excessive pet hair or stains uh, or anything like that. And so I'll just ask some qualifying questions and get those answers. And then I say, and for you, obviously, you're the one who wants to detail. What is it that you want out of your detail? Like, why did you, how did you, or why did you get in touch with me? And so I try to set that up as another way that I can build value or, or sell back to their direct need. Um, so, and then from that point, I'll try to pitch everybody on a coding whenever I just start off. I have this pitch and I say, look, so I'll tell you about uh, my protection package, which is an investment into your vehicle. It's nano ceramic technology, which stems from the aerospace industry. They actually coat engine parts uh, in formula one. They use it to protect the paint, the motors, and then an even cellular regeneration. They use this nanotechnology for that uh, study. And so then I'll just spin off to so the products, are some of the most sophisticated technology or a breed of that we have available to us today. Mm. And so we have coatings that can do your paint, your wheels, your trim, your glass, your interior, and it's going to actually add a new workable surface over whatever we coat. So we're not only going to clean, protect, and get everything in the best possible shape before we coat it, but then once it's coated, it has another surface that's going to take the abuse of the day-to-day uh, deterioration and things that usually will depreciate the value of your vehicle. So that's, that's, that's our highest plan. And I'll say, you know, it's pretty damn good sales pitch, out. by the way. <laughs> yeah, so you just, you know, you get their thinking up and you tell them why they need it. You know what I mean? And they're like, well, hell yeah, that sounds like the shit. And, he obviously has got the best stuff because it comes from, you know, cellular regeneration and the aerospace industry. Um, and so I'll pitch that and I'll say, I, I start out with a full paint correction and, or whatever, you know, just try to get a feel, but that's how I get into it. And then if they're, they are interested, then I'll usually say like paint a thousand dollars. Wheels are 200 bucks, trims, 200 bucks, glasses, 200 bucks, yep. interiors, 200 bucks. So you're up over 2100 for a full, you know, protection package, different time frames for different surfaces. But that comes with my own warranty. If you ever have any issues with the coding or the performance of the coding questions, I'm here for you 100% of the time. So then they're thinking that they've got somebody in their corner. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You've already established yourself as a subject matter expert. And so now they're thinking, well, shoot, I've got this guy who's in the, it just is a way to break down some of the walls, effectively ac- communicate the product and their significance. And it's just, anyway, so I like to pitch everybody on coding from there. Um, you know, you get a read for them. They, they are, they aren't interested in it. Usually if they're, they want paint correction, then they've already uh, brought that up, you know, and so then you would definitely want to try to, sell them a coating but um from there if they're not interested in anything like that corrections or coding wise then i'll do okay well this i do a showroom detail i basically only offer one type of detail because i put all of myself into it you know and then tell them look for a car say it's 120 bucks and i know i talked about the coatings but i also have a paint sealant called jet seal which was also designed for the aerospace industry, which can withstand extreme high and low temperatures. Why that's important is your typical wax can burn off the surface at 170 degrees. And that's going to last a year. It's going to perform like a wax, but it has that longevity. So if you're not somebody who regularly details their car, I highly recommend it. It's only 40 bucks extra. I closed nine out of 10 of those. Yep, that's a so great that's 40 upsell. bucks. 40 bucks to pop every freaking time or 40 or 60, depending on the size of the vehicle. But 
you know, that you've already established yourself, like I said, as the expert. So right. if you're recommending it and they want that, but they can't have it, then they're like, well, I guess this is the next best thing. And so they almost always will jump on that, you know? And the thing I and like, not, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I say that they'll jump on that and I don't mean to sound salesy like I'm trying, like that's my only motivation, but I actually believe in the products and the result and I believe in my work and I stand behind it. And so the things I'm telling them, I, I believe, which is one of the, in sales, I always hated forcing stuff on people that I didn't necessarily share that they should have as much passion about it as I do. But, but this industry and my work, I do. And so I don't mind selling it and building the value in it. I think that's the more, the most important thing is build value in your product, build value in who you are as a detailer, build value in your processes. You know, if somebody is trying to beat you down on price, you can say, well, let me say, uh, we're going to do a single stage co uh, correction on blah, 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 350 bucks. And you're like, man, I was really hoping for 200. So mm. to get away back from that, Man, I completely understand. Like two hundred dollars, especially three hundred and fifty, is a lot of money. This is kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through. We're gonna do our wash. We're gonna use these products. I'm gonna mask everything off so that you don't get any dust or white lines or compound and shit in the cracks. If 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 they want the service and they're hung up on price, then you haven't built enough value in the service. So all they're saying is, I don't know why I would pay that much. So you circle back start talking about the process and the, the intricacies and the things that go into it and how you use uh, microfiber towels, you know, just like pick something and then say, so that's what sets me apart from somebody who might do it for $200. And if you're somebody uh, like me who likes to keep nice things nice, then I think you'll find the value in my work over something like that. So when were you looking to get something done? <laughs> I love it. You know what I'm mean? So you just got to, you got to know what to say whenever you get on that call. And I mentioned text messages. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get text messages, try to get them on the phone because you can always best represent yourself on the phone, in my opinion, right. unless you don't like talking to people. And if you don't, then you need to write a pre-generated sales type script with the same value of information that I just said and be able to copy and paste that into a text. You get a text from somebody. Oh, okay. Well send them this response. This is who I am. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. These are my social media outlets. Um, I'd love to connect with you. When are you trying to get something done? You know, just mm -hmm. always kind of be building value and, and bringing people into your network. I love it. If people want to connect with you, Travis, how do they find you? If they want to kind of friend request you to spy on you to see what kind of the, the things you're doing and model after that, how can people find you? Yeah, man. Uh, Travis McNutt on Facebook. You can put in T nut. It should bring me up. Texas show shine detailing is my Facebook page. Um, outside of that, if you want to get a hold of me, I know you got those two. So, reach out. I'd be happy to connect with anybody, uh, help do whatever I can. And, uh, yeah, so that's me. Awesome, man. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing, sharing the tips and tricks that you did. I really, really appreciate it. Hey man, it was my pleasure and honor. I appreciate you taking your time out to listen to what I had to share to you guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of the auto detailing podcast. Head on over to autodetailingpodcast.com for full show notes and links of everything that we've talked about today. And don't forget to check out our resources page for a direct link to all the products talked about not only on today's episode, but that I use in my day-to-day -day detail business. They have direct links so you can purchase and get free shipping right from that page. That's autodetailingpodcast.com. We'll see you on the next episode.